Hi, my name is Kelly Williamson. I'm with the Plant Based Kitchen, and today I want to welcome Jane Esselstyn with Healthcare Self Care. Welcome, Jane. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us today. I so much appreciate it. Well, I appreciate what you do. Thank you. So everybody, you are joining the Plant-Based Cooking Summit, where we're going to talk about tips, tricks, recipes, journeys, all kinds of things to unleash your inner chef and to actually help you lead a healthy lifestyle. So let's get started. So Jane, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do with the plant-based world? Um, sure. Um, I am, um, I think I want to say it first, I'm a mother of three teenagers, mm -hmm. and my husband and I um, have a plant-based household. And I am a nurse, and I do research with the Cleveland Clinic, um, mostly with obese kids with high cholesterol. And I am an athlete, kind of an ex a college athlete. But, you know, I'm still am active out there. No need, no need to compete anymore. Um, and I am the author of the cookbook section of Plant Strong which is a book by my brother, Rip, but I did the recipe section. <laughs> yummy, yummy. It's a beautiful and, book. And my mom and I co-authored the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease cookbook. My dad wrote Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease, and it was um, getting kind of long in the tooth, a little older. The, bu the book itself, the information is great, but the recipes were needing to get freshened up. So my mom and I just put this together with all of our favorite recipes and my brother Rip and I still collaborate with um, his uh, on his engine 2 stuff so we just had this book the engine 2 seven day recipe come out mm -hmm. almost exactly a month or five weeks ago yep. and this is a ton of fun um, I did again the recipe section of the book and um, it's got an amazing results and reviews about how this this eating this way for just seven days mm -hmm. can make an amazing impact. Yep. So I do I do that. I do recipe testing, I do recipe creation and testing and all this stuff. And I've got three kids in high school. And um, I also, if anybody cares, I teach part-time sexuality education. Wow. Just throwing food and sex thing. There you go. So if I, if I get a little bit off the rails, it's because I have these two parts of myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about your journey. So tell us how you became into the, you know, going into plant-based and how it's kind of evolved in your life. I'd love to hear your story. Oh, well, um, I live next door. Like my parents literally are just next door. Not across the street, but next door. Um, I grew up in my parents' household, obviously, and my dad's research um, with his breast cancer patients led him to see this amazing impact on their cardiac numbers. So he just said, oh my gosh, we're treating one thing and getting great effects in all these other places, so let's just follow the research, follow this good news. And um, so we all started eating plant-based when we were late teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, and it, but it was it wasn't uh, exactly the guidelines it is now. We were no meat and not a lot of dairy. We we went off dairy, but there was all these no fat or no added fat or fat removed um, dairy products things, and we sort of soon got rid of all dairy um, mm -hmm. because it ended up being you know all the research about dairy mm -hmm. comes out continues to come out and no added oils and minimal salt, minimal sweet kind of things were part of how we ate. And so I went off into my my, my life as a 20-year-old you know, with these sort of guidelines in my way of eating, and they just stuck. And um, so I started then and, and um, have continued. Luckily, my husband, when I met him, was a vegetarian. I don't know what I would have done if I was <laughs> in love with some Carnival. That would be so hard. Um, but he's full on plant based now. He's actually does a lot of work with Engine Two, um, uh, with Engine Two programs and immersions and things. And he and I do programs together. Uh, also uh, called wrapping your head, heart, and hands around plant based eating. And it's kind of like what you're doing in a way, but we have it live and people come and wow. um, my parents are there. So it's kind of this. I can lure them in. Like, oh, my dad will be there. <laughs> Um, but it's a full day of just 
pretty much making food and eating food, and they're so stuffed by the end of the day. But there's information sprinkled in about some of the challenges and hurdles of being plant-based and you know why it is that way, why it's difficult to eat that way for some people, um, why for others there's like, oh, flick the switch, done, there you go. Um, and just how to make things taste good and different and have tons of different flavors and textures and not just the same, you know, I can't even think of what would be the same, but yeah. boiled, boiled kale on plain brown rice. Lots yes. more out. Yeah. Um, so I, I came to this really, as they say, honestly, with my parents who've been involved in this for, feels like my whole life, but, um, you know, almost 35, 40 years. And um, it's funny how we can't let go of it. It's just, it's the right thing. We're all, no one's on any medication in my family. My parents, no one. My parents are 83 and 81. And you know, we're all in our 40s, uh, just 50. Today's my brother's 53rd birthday. Not uh -huh. ripped. Rip head game. We're all like not even. They're not, my brothers actually are the same age for the next two weeks. That's great. They're both be great. Um, uh, and I'm 51, and my other brothers in his late 40s. We all are plant based. All of our spouses and all of our kids be plant based, and you know we're all you know active, healthy, fit. So it's it's you don't want to give it up. True. You don't want to give it up. It's wonderful. If you're plant based. You know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. So tell us about your live event. What do you, what do you do? And because you're saying everybody gets stuffed during the event and it's all live, do you have everybody come to you, or do you do it on the internet, or how do you do that? Um, well, a couple different ways. Um, actually, March 11th of this year, 2017, let me offer you an invitation <laughs> yeah. um, to come and, and have your summit. Um, actually, your summit's before then, but March 11th of this year, I ha I host a one day conference called Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease for Women. And it focuses on women because if I said prevent and reverse heart disease for men, mm -hmm. the same women would attend. True. Because they're such the caregivers, the caretakers, the community, you know, we theaters of the community. Um, and we really are like, was it Harriet Beecher Stowe who said that the true architects of society are women. Mm -hmm. And so, I just focus on women because so often these conferences that I attend and, or go to or present at um, have all these men, researchers, and their mm -hmm. research, 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 rah, 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 and it's very, um, like, a lot of, I mean, I love them. Right. I, I love them. I'm surrounded by three brothers, got a great husband, son, the works, but there's so many women there who want to hear a woman's voice. Mm -hmm. And then my, woman, my mom and I go up on stage and we cook. It's like, oh, it's just, it's sort of reinforces this, like, oh, you know, this is where we see the women's role, which is so not the way that yeah. we feed her. And, you know, I'm doing all kinds of research with the Cleveland Clinic. Mm -hmm. I have a presentation I do that's got, you know, all kinds of information from head to toe, what's happening in the body with a plant-based diet, the benefits of eating plant-based above and below the belt. <laughs> you know, I got to go both places <laughs> there. Um, anyway, this, this conference is so fun to do and it's live it's in Cleveland Ohio and it's a one-day event and you know you get goodie bags or grocery bags and you get raffle tickets for you know Cuisinarts and a chance to be in the Ruby cooking school for a free tuition oh. and um, the audio nanas machine mm -hmm. my husband makes these um I'm gonna get up okay <laughs> my husband is a his hobby is, is working with wood so he makes these amazing um, oh. Plants only chopping boards. These are really, really thick. Oh, it's beautiful. And they're for plants only. <laughs> Go rancid and dairy will curdle on these boards. I love that board. That's beautiful. Thick and awesome. And anyway, so uh, we have all kinds of fun raffles and things at this, this event. And it is filled with other women doctors who are presenting. My father's obviously the keynote speaker because he is the he's the keystone for how I got involved in this to begin with, but we have great a great OBGYN. We have a cardiologist who herself um, was suffering with horrible pain and cripple, just crippled with rheumatoid arthritis. Yep. And it's a 
embarrassing for a doctor who thinks they, they, they know everything to admit they have this problem. And so she tried medication, didn't work for years. She went on a plant-based diet, gone. She has triathlons now. Wonderful. And wow. She's got three kids and she's cranking along. Another MD who's speaking, um, um, Sarai Stanek, uh, who's this wonderful MD from the New York, New Jersey area. She is in lifestyle medicine and she was walking with two canes in, in, mm. in medical school because she had her MS. Just blew, whatever, flared up, lesions were there. She's reversed all those symptoms mm. with a plant based diet. Wow. And she's presenting, and now she, she changed her whole medical career. She just went from being whatever she was focusing on that to being a lifestyle medicine doctor. And that's becoming a huge part of, uh, of medicine itself, which is wow. awesome because it's preventative. But here's the flyer for the conference. Wonderful. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll send you a link. Um, but my, I love my it. Company, my company is Healthcare is Self Care, and I have the worst website name on earth. It's Healthcare is Self Care, but not the words. It's HC is SC. Oh. <laughs> well, well, no, but it's short, and another one wasn't available. So sign up for Healthcare is Self Care today. And it's, it's a ton of fun. We dance all the breaks, and we have food all day long. Oh, wonderful. You know, muffins and fruit, and then make your own appetizers. Big bowls, uh, build your own bowl for lunch and desserts, desserts, desserts. That um, sounds wonderful. It's great. So that's the one main big live event we do per year. And then my husband and I do these little events that are just, just 20 to 25 people. And they are from like 8.30 to 5.30, the whole day. But it is so intimate. We, we know everybody's story by the end of the day. We do some information, some, uh, you know, a little bit of time of a, a lecture, I guess you could call it, but more information giving. But it is a lot of back and forth and discussion about, um, you know, hurdles and challenges and mm -hmm. this whole, as Doug Lyle talks about, the pleasure trap yep. um, and on and on and on. And my, my mom and I do a demo and I never know what my mom is going to do. Her, she's such a riot. She's like a live comet <laughs> flying around. The place. And then my dad, my dad shows up. Um, at the end, and he eats this amazing meal that we have built all day long um, with our own hands. It's a it's a great feast, fun. I heard so, life is good. Life is good. I heard you were also in Arizona. You were at an event with Rip. I had friends that actually came to see you, and they said that you and your mom were a hoot. <laughs> right, right. So um, yes, Engine Two. That that was that those are healthcare self care events yep. I was just talking about, and they're. Um, my what I do is just a little bit different than Engine Two. Yep. I just focus a little more on women, a little more on it's food, and, and making it happen. And it's easy, and it's quick, and it's good. But Rip, um, at Engine Two, which is uh, the his original book, I don't have it right here. I can scoot off and get it for you if you wanted me to for a prop. But um, Engine Two has they also have weekend retreat type events. Their weekend events are two days long yep. usually, and then they have a seven day version event in Sedona, Arizona, and the reason we have it there is that we take over the kitchen, and we take over all this, all this space, because we can't go to, you know, a, a another different kind of resort, yep. and say, oh, for our people, give us this food, but you can have this food yep. on the bar, because, you know, everyone would just be eating our food, and we'd be eating their food, we'd just be a mess. So, we can take this place over, because it's just sort of the right size, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful, um, you know, high desert, you know, in yep. Europe. It's just beautiful. Yeah. And it's kind of like they're in jail, if you will, because they have to eat our food the whole time. And we, over the last, I think we've done a dozen or so of these immersions, mm -hmm. and we have their biomarkers ahead of time mm -hmm. and at the end, so the seven-day window. And what happens in those seven days was shocking. Yeah. Their cholesterol, their weight, their triglycerides, their, their sugars, and... That's what this whole book, The Seven Day Rescue, is based on. It's just taking, like, we didn't realize we were doing all this research, but we were, and it's amazing, and do it yourself at home. You don't need to come to jail in Sedona with us. You can do it at home. And they've had, some places have had amazing results. It's, um, all kind of businesses are doing it, like it's a challenge within the business, mm -hmm. or companies are asking to do it, or, you know, whoever, and neighborhoods, and um 
one place I was just at, um, Highland Industries here in uh, west side of Cleveland, they had someone's triglycerides dropped like 350 points. Another guy's cholesterol was like 106. I mean, part of me is like saying, what were you eating? Instead of like, oh, that's so great. Could you maintain that? And just have these one week, you know, poof, mm -hmm. go down. I mean, no... No drugs can do that. I mean, right. food is the best medicine, and medicine is the best food. Um, and it's just so starkly true yep. when you see something as quick as this happen when eating plants okay. for just a week. And they did not call it a jail. They said they had the best time, and like I said, they thought you and your mom were a hoot. They're just there's like you guys were so funny. Uh, hooray. I'm yes. glad they remember. Loved you. Absolutely loved you. <laughs> hooray. I love to hear it. Yeah. So tips and tricks. What tips and tricks would you like to be able to share with us today? So it could be cooking. It could be how to lead a healthy lifestyle. Anything like that. Um, there's just so many um, tips and tricks. And like anything you want to do in your life, flossing more. Um, not going on Twitter as much, or whatever people want as their goal, just give it a go. Give it a chance. Give it a seven-day rescue. Try to go plant-based. But if you are, if you're so, that's just, just try it. If you want to try plant-based, if you're looking to make plant-based be easier, mm -hmm. which would be the, the tip I want to be giving, okay. is um. And I've got three teenagers who are crazy athletes. So believe me when I tell you this: that you can eat a ton of this food. I mean, you can eat a lot, and the best way to be prepared to do that is to batch cook ahead of time. I'm sure you've talked about batch cooking in some mm -hmm. of your previous um, interviews or yep. you yourself, um, but batch cooking, I find if I cook the complex carbohydrates ahead of time, if I've got a rack of potatoes cooked or a stack of potatoes in the oven while we're watching the evening news, which is like some sort of crazy entertainment these days, <laughs> God, um, <laughs> Or if we have, I turn the rice cooker on before I go for a run or pick up a carpool or whatever, get that stuff done ahead of time, then the rest of the meal is not so stressful or crazy or what's coming. Mm -hmm. The kids come home from swimming, they sit down, boom, they're all eating their salads at first. I'll slice up some oranges. Second tip, by the way, yep. don't ever buy fruit and not slice it up. Don't have a beautiful melon that sits there until it turns into a bad case of brain cancer. Mm -hmm. Just cut it up, slice yep. it up. If they like the stems off the strawberries, cut them off. Either, either they're going to rot with the stems on or they're going to be not be eaten because they, whatever, they left in the back of the fridge. But eat, I mean, chop your food and it will get eaten, your fruit mm -hmm. especially. So back to the batch cooking. Um, if we come home and the rice is done or the potatoes are done or whatever, salad, which is just, you know, poom in the bowl, um, because you can buy pre-mixed salad, pre-washed and ready to go, just boom, boom, boom. Um, and have to slice up an orange in no time. That just stalls for those three, four minutes that you need to perhaps rinse the beans, throw them in the microwave or on the stove, however you warm things up, um, get the beans out. And the other thing I batch cook besides the complex carbohydrates are things I know my family loves, and that is mango salsa from Cleveland, Ohio. It's so hard to find good mangoes, but when I do, I buy a bunch of them, and I chop it up and I make mango salsa, and then we have meals that the kids like mango salsa with, which is this um, like Cuban sofrito black beans, mm. uh, brown rice with all this mango salsa. Then we'll have burritos the next day, and then we'll have you know um, a quesadillas without the queso. We mm -hmm. call them dias because <laughs> yeah. all these things have mango salsa because the mangoes yep. were going to be bad after about four days, but we can get boom 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 because they were good mangoes, um, and they don't really know it's the same meal in an open bowl. Roll up in a tortilla, you know, cooked in a quesadilla. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they, they're on to me now, but you know, <laughs> it's what I mean. Um, and they love corn salsa, which is pretty much like mango salsa, but just with roasted corn or sweet corn and some jalapeno and some red onion, black pepper, lime, shazam! Yeah. They love it. <laughs> so much more flavor and so much more plants and so much more just potent, good phytochemicals in their bodies. And we also love cranberry salsa. I know it's not Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. but this cranberry salsa that we make is um, it's almost, uh, almost relishy. It's so mm. intense. Mm -hmm. And it's the 
cranberries, you know, are so tart and sweet, and with True. a little bit of maple syrup, um, and jalapenos and cilantro, or even arugula sometimes. The kids don't love arugula as much as we do. Um, but if I have all these toppings ready to go, boom, boom. And it could be potato bar, or, you know, rice, uh, brown rice bar, or quinoa, or um, polenta is a little different flavor profile for me. I like to go more Italian or mm -hmm. um, sort of South American. Yep. Um, and if though, and if those, if the, that grain, I say grain, but I mean like the complex carbohydrate is cooked, we're ready to go. Because yep. I've got X number of sa sauces and salsas in the fridge. The bean warm up, boom, 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 and the grain is cooked. So batch cooking ahead of time with the complex carbohydrates and batch cooking actively ahead of time with the sauces and salsas makes a world of difference for our family. And my son is 16 and he's six, six and a half. Wow. <laughs> Poor thing has never had any meat or milk. And my daughter is almost six feet and she is the Ohio high school state record holder in the tournament I am. Oh, poor thing. Somehow she can be strong, but have no meat and no milk. <laughs> And then I have, we have a ninth grader who's exactly where a ninth grader should be. She's just coming in, she's got her braces off, and she's growing, and, you know, things are happening as they should for a ninth grader. And she's actually on all those relays with them. It's so exciting. That's wonderful. Um, but so, so I, I add that in, not to be braggadocio, but just to be, like, your kids are not lacking anything sure. when they eat a plant-based diet. If anything, you're, you're saving them from the, this, this um, over abundance of calories and fat and saturated fat and animal protein that seems to be detrimental to our growth development, skin, yep. chemical hormone cycles and whatnot. And uh, I wish I could parade them behind me. Exactly. <laughs> So your salsas, you talked about the mango salsa will last like four days. So you've got you've got your corn salsa and then you've got your um, cranberry salsa. How long do those, do you think, as far as like in mason jars or something, last? Yeah, I, I, we have these great, um, they're like nice bowls at the bottom where they seal. Yep. So it's like I serve them and then I seal them so they don't have to like be transferred yep. and all that. Just, they're great. Um, but the mango salsa probably lasts two days because we eat it so fast. <laughs> um, but that lasts long. The corn salsa kind of probably the same amount of time because you know the corn kind of goes bad but the cranberry because it's so tart and it's got the syrup which mm -hmm. is you know salt and sugar are a good preservative um that lasts a longer time and we don't use as much of that because it's a little more you know it's more intense so when i make a batch of that it lasts i, I bet i have it next like almost 10 days wow that's great don't don't call me <laughs> don't don't judge me but it lasts much 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 longer much Oh, that's wonderful. So what's another tip and trick that you'd like to be able to share with us? Oh, um, there's, oh, there's so much. So definitely batch cook. Um, and I, 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 the word transition in some, people, some people's minds is transitioning from like a, a horrible event like a death happening. I like to transition food like, oh, we, like we just had, for example, we had this black bean sofrito meal last mm -hmm. night. And I've got a lot of corn salsa, and I've got our friends brought some guacamole. Mm -hmm. So they and they left it with us when they when they left. And I was I thought, what a gift! So like, what can we have now? Like, what can I transition to that's not going to be an overwhelming? Like, I'm not going to say, oh, let's have um, mommy's uh, eat loaf, which yep. is a meat loaf without the meat, obviously, yep. and which is a whole new oh, this 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 barbecue sauce flavor profile. It's very American. We'll probably have it with some like potato wedges or you know. Broccoli and whatever, but what can I use from? How can I transition this meal into what's going to be for tonight? And then whatever we have, like let's say I make potato bar, mm -hmm. we top with these things. But I might make mommy's mushroom gravy to go with the potato. So I'd be cooking one extra thing, but potatoes we could cook right now when I'm talking to you, just passively happening. Um, I would then have probably leftover potatoes for the next day. Mm -hmm. So then I would think, okay, let's make a miso soup. And then yeah. so just transitioning um, uh, items you've made from meal to meal to meal. Just It doesn't take a lot of planning by mm -hmm. any means. If I've got basil, oh, we'll have this for dinner. I mean, basil's the smallest part of the meal, but that can trigger what can happen. So I guess maybe just because I feel like I'm, I'm, maybe I I'm, can juggle food a little mm -hmm. 
differently than some people? I don't think so. I'm not a chef. I'm a mom and a nurse and a wife and a sister and a daughter and a go for it. Don't stop me. I'm going to do this. Um, and just make it happen. And just be bold and be brave, I would say. And just trust you can take food from day to day to day. Um, and there's so much, there's just sauces and salsas are our saviors. Yeah. And um, have those around. Have those around. So what would you tip that was but that was a lot of <laughs> I like that I like the transitioning because it's because you're talking about batch cooking and then and then the people think that they have to do the batch cooking but then you but being able to move it through and saying okay now I have the potatoes extra so what do I want to do with that maybe I'll do a hash or I'll do something else with it and just doing that is actually great yeah great. That, you were picking up what I was laying down yes yeah. <laughs> I'm with you <laughs> and um and I, I also feel like, um, like another sort of tip, I know you're going to ask me for another tip. That was one of your questions. You have three tips. Mm -hmm. um, but the next thing is I would just say don't feel like you need to have all these, um, any special kind of gear in the kitchen. I feel like my tip would be you don't, you can cook this way on a camping trip sure. over a fire with a pot and a spoon. You can even like chop your mango with a spoon if that's all you have. I mean, you could just, you don't need new knives and an Instapot and a, and a crock pot and a, what's that, uh, pressure cooker and yeah. a, da, 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 da. I mean, I, yes, I have some of those things for sure. And I think I drive my Cuisinart faster than like Mario Andretti ever drove in a race car. <laughs> but um, you don't really need a lot of gear. You know, you use a pot, a pan, plates and bowls and you're good to go. But um, one thing that I have loved and does help me a ton with my sauces and salsas, because those are kind of the spark, as we mm -hmm. call it in the Engine 2 Rescue. It's the spark, it's the added like shazam on top of the meal, um, is, uh, is the, my, my, my zest. <laughs> I love my zester. Um, yep. This is just, you take your um, lime or your lemon or your orange, yep. whatever you want to zest, and don't zest a bandana. Um, banana or a mango, just citrusy things. Mm -hmm. And that zest brings such life and flavor to the sauce or the or the hummus or the spread or the salsa you're making. Yeah. Um, and it, it just makes a huge difference. So this is a, if you're a carpenter, it's your rasp in your toolbox. If you're a chef, it's your microplaner, your zester. Yeah. Um, and I also have just a, a citrus press. Yep. I've used it so much. Look at this. The paint has worn off. <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> I still use it. I may have yellow paint me somewhere, but um, <laughs> for my kids. Um, but those things make me really use the the citrus fruits um, a lot more. And I feel like as a vegetarian, and my kids are all athletes, um, I know that using... Vitamin C, when you're, or not using, eating vitamin C at a meal is great for iron absorption. And you want that as a human, you want that as a woman in her fertile years because of the, you know, menstruation. Because with blood loss, you want to keep your iron stores up. And it's a great way to get that little bit of vitamin C in every day. So it sounds or, like... Yeah. So it sounds like that's why you do the oranges when you were talking about the salad and then having the slices of the fruit and the oranges. That I didn't even catch it then, but I do, I do it all the time to keep yep. them in all their colors and flavors and vitamins and coenzymes interacting and yeah. what they do. Wonderful. Not white bread and cheese. It just does, it does nothing for the body. Yeah. yeah. So what's, what's like one of your favorite kids' recipes? So if they had something to choose from, what would be one of their favorite recipes? And then I'm going to well, ask you what yours is. Well, the, last night, the one that we had, um, so funny, um, my kids they say, like, I could have this every night. I think because it's such a variety of flavor. It sounds so boring, like brown rice and black beans. But it's, um, it's the, you know what, I, you, know what you, you probably know what a sofrito is. Uh -huh. um, not everyone does, but basically it's, it's a, I take a one-pound bag of black beans and 12 cups of water and turn it on while I'm doing a bazillion other things. It boils back there, and if there's an onion in there and a green pepper and 
bay leaves sometimes. I kind of forget them sometimes. And a bunch of garlic, maybe like five, six cloves of garlic chopped up. And they just boil. And, um, but those are, are, are simmers uh, for hours, two or three hours. And so Frito is then kind of like the flavor pack, if you will. Mm-hmm. And it's just a, a big, I, I use the big onions, like the big sweet Vidalia kind yep. of thing. And so people say, oh, add one onion. I'm like, they, they think, <laughs> I, I'm adding this, like, rah! Um, it's, like a, it's like the size of a baby's head. They're huge. And so an onion, about eight cloves of garlic, and another green pepper, and then some oregano and some cumin, um, all cooked in a, in a frying pan on high, and I guess it sticks, and you pour a little water in it, and the brownness comes up. But then I add that to the black beans, which are now down to like just almost a little bit of moisture in black yep. beans, and cook it all together, and then immerse a blender it so it turns into like the texture of hummus. Or, 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 I mean, some hummus is thick, some is runny, but this is like a really runny hummus, almost like a, not pancake batter, but it's, if hummus and pancake batter could mix, get married and have an offspring, it would look like that. But it's this wonderful black, flavorful, flavorful stuff. So we have it on the, on the brown rice with this, you know, the Frito black beans, and then they have all these great sauces and toppings and things. Um, and I, I crisp up tortillas so they can like scoop them with tortillas. Um, my one, the youngest daughter said, I could have this every night. Nice. I love this meal. So I love that they love that. They, they also love whole wheat pasta with red sauce. Um, um, they love to have our dias, which are, you know, mm-hmm. this whole black bean meal. And I just mix in refried beans as the mortar to all the rice and beans and things. Um, I use whole beans with those. Yeah. And, and so then I hear that, and then they have the same toppings on it. Um, my kids also love, we have a, I have my own teriyaki sauce that I make, and it's coming out in our next cookbook, which is coming out in 2018. It's called The Engine 2 Cookbook. Wow. And this teriyaki sauce is based on what my kids were like, this this is too salt, this is too sweet, this is too gingery, this is too, so finally, we got it right. And this teriyaki sauce is delicious. And um, they love the teriyaki tofu mm. over brown rice just a little bit of a dip, like an, an Asian profile, no salsas needed. That sauce itself is enough. And um, we have broccoli in the whole mixture with that. And they, they love that. Wow. Um, and, I, and, and luckily, we all love the same thing. And I think it's really important. I don't know if you have kids, um, mm-hmm. but it's important, I think, in the style of the sort of the Europeans, kids can and should eat the same food we do. My yeah. kids have not always done this. I mean, we just stuck with it, stuck with it. You know, we we would serve things a little more um, Chipotle style, or if you will, mm-hmm. just yep. here's the rice, here's the bean, here's the sauce, here's it. And they slowly started to like, can you give me one piece of mango? None of that red stuff. Can I? I'll have corn, but none of the, none of the onions. It's like, it's like, but now they're like eating it all, and it, it just doesn't happen overnight, but it has happened in their childhood, which I'm happy to say. <laughs> So what's your favorite recipe? All the above. That's what I'm saying. Okay. My recipes are the same as their recipes. Good. Um, no, you know what? I have, this is my favorite. I cannot get enough of this right here. This is Dr. Sue Stag Polenta. It's a, a round of, um, you know, polenta can come in a tube. Yep. It's prepared in the tube sometimes. I mean, make medallions of polenta, make medallions of sweet potatoes, either cook them in the oven or microwave potato, whatever you do. Um, and have some tomato slices, and then the mortar in between everything is this wonderful, if you have heart disease, it's cannellini bean based, but if you don't, it can be walnut based sauce. The sauce is like crack, it's so addicting and good. And it's just garlic and, and tamari and this bean or, or nut based uh, spread. And then on top of the, you know, the tomatoes on top, I'll show you again what I'm talking about. So it's the it's the polenta it looks and the potato, yep. and the, and the potato. But the sauce here is just basil and lemon, period. Mm. Nothing else mixed together. And it smells like this amazing basil, and it's just it's just this kiss of acid. And over it all, you drizzle balsamic glaze. And it is every flavor in the book, and it blows your mind. And 
can I have six of those for dinner? That was so good. <laughs> That's the appetizer we're going to have hands on, make your own at our conference. So fun. You've got to come. You've got to come. I'm going to have to definitely look at it. March 11th, Cleveland, Ohio. See you there. So will there be a lot of snow there? <laughs> no, we had no snow last year. It was all Believe me, last week it was like 60 here. We were 50-something. And there was no snow, all just mud. I mean, oh. everything is just, you know. So um, we have just got snow in the last two days. We had a snow day from school, even. Wow. Um, and, you know, Cleveland's on Lake Erie, so we're kind of unpredictable. We get this lake effect weather that comes in. But March is pretty much done. By that. Thank you. I will definitely look at it. I promise you. So we talked about some tips and tricks. We talked about recipes. So a little bit more about your focus. Kind of like what are you, what are you planning on doing for the future and, and kind of what's the big picture? Well, what I'm working on um, right now, pretty much the way you are with the summit, is uh, this Prevent and Reverse Heart mm -hmm. Disease for Women conference, which we're so excited about. And it's, it's just a one day, it's one day in live, as you can imagine. We've yep. got everything together here for um, online, but live it's... Um, you know, there's so much involved with the weather yeah. and, you know, all the raffle gifts are there and all the people are signed in and all the speakers are there and the PowerPoints work and the microphones work. And so there's just so much that as a planner I have going on, as well as my own presentation and our, our demo mm -hmm. and our the food and the lunch and the, there's just a ton to go into that. So I'm very focused on that, which is not far in the future. It's just, you know, March 11th, as I keep saying, see you all there. Um, and um, we, I'm also in the middle of a, of a year-long study with the Cleveland Clinic on comparing a plant-based, the effects of a plant-based diet, American Heart Association diet, and a Mediterranean diet mm. on obese kids with high cholesterol. Wow. So I'm working in that study, and just I have a lot of other events that we're doing coming up. We've got some Engine 2 immersions in Sedona in May and in October week-long jail in Sedona, and um, my daughter's going to college in oh. August. Oh. It's so exciting, with so, ah, and our book coming out in January of 2018, you, books are like any piece of art, you yeah. know, you're never done, never done, never done, never done, so that's still kind of going on. Um, my, so my, my future is not that far, far, far from me because I have so many things that are happening right here. Mm -hmm. And we do our, our wrapping your head, heart, and hands around plant-based eating events in May and July and uh, September and November of 2017 that we have to get up and going. So I've got all kinds of projects going on, um, and we just keep trying to spread the word the way that you are being so helpful to get the word out there. We appreciate you so much for spreading the word. It's it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And I like the way that you spread it too. You're you're funny and you're yeah, like I said, she 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 called you a hoot. I fully agree. You are so funny. <laughs> not, you're not you're not getting half what we did in Sedona. We get, instant, we get demos. We get really off screen, if you will, like off color, below the belt. Uh, it's, it's a ton of fun there. That's good. I love it. So what else would you like to be able to share with us today? I think that you've done a great job asking all about what's going on. Um, and I just hope that people are not scared of um, trying a plant-based diet and just giving it a go, mm -hmm. even for a week. It is, it's always embarrassing to take credit for being a plant-based expert because Mother Nature got it right. Mother Nature got it so right. Mm -hmm. and. Credit where credit is due. Just go to the produce section, fall to your knees, thank you, and then pick up your basket and fill it up and check out. Yep. And just forget the rest of the store, other than the bean aisle and maybe the potatoes and things like that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We know. yeah. That's wonderful. Well, thank you. I so much appreciate it. You were you were wonderful today, and everything that you do, you were you. I know you say that it, Mother Nature got it right, but you are a plant based guru, so you're, it oh. sticks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right thank you thank you so everybody thank you today for joining the plant-based cooking summit so stay tuned for more tips and tricks and jane thank you so much you are absolutely wonderful thanks thank you 
All right. Bye. Bye.